I want to congratulate Joe Sackick because everybody was flipping out for the past like five, ten minutes right now. And it's because of this three-way trade that has gone down. Let's give everybody a quick rundown of who has gotten what. The Senators acquire center Matt Duchesne, $6 million, whatever. The Predators acquire $3.5 million center Kyle Turris. He's going to sign a 6x6 extension afterwards. And the Avalanche, they get themselves Andrew Hammond, Bowers, Samuel Gerard, Vladislav Kamenev, a second from Nashville, a first from Ottawa, and a third also from Ottawa. Wow. Okay, so taking a look at the Avalanche, because I said at the beginning of this video, I want to congratulate Sakic, and that was my immediate instinct. Just looking at everything, Sakic has been on that fence for a long time, and Matt Duchesne has been in that territory of, is he going to get traded, is he not going to be, for a long time. And we all knew that Joe Sakic was really stingy about what he's going to get back for Duchesne. But the fact that it took Sakic two teams worth of picks and prospects to be satisfied for the return, and the fact that he pulled it off... Oh my god, what a fantastic move for the Avalanche. Taking a look at the Avalanche here, they only lost Duchesne. And what do they get in return? Hammond, Bowers, Gerard, Kamenev, and three picks. What the hell? That's fantastic. I want to go over a rundown of what the other teams have lost, because the Avalanche, they only lost Matt Duchesne. That's kind of obvious. The Ottawa Senators, they lost Kyle Turris, a first, a third, Andrew Hammond, and Shane Bowers. So, taking a look at what they gave up. The Senators, they gave up Kyle Turris, Andrew Hammond, Shane Bowers, a first, and a third. And they get Duchesne in return. Now, that's five good assets. Uh, maybe four, because Andrew Hammond, I mean, he's a valuable piece as a goaltender in terms of filling up your roster and, and everything and the cap and all that. Okay, so ultimately, I don't think this was a really good deal for the Senators because it was already guaranteed. Like, Kyle Turris is not going to sign a contract at the end of this year. He's $3.5 million right now. He wanted 6x6. Six six. So the, the Senators, they fill out this problem and they solve this problem by trading Hammond, Bowers, Turris, and two picks for Matt Duchesne who already costs $6 million, and in my opinion, isn't really as good of a player as Kyle Turris. Duchesne's, an, Duchesne's kind of overrated, in my opinion. But, Duchesne's already making $6 million, and his contract is up, I believe it's next season. So what's going to happen then? There was already a little bit of a controversy going around Kyle Turris right now, because everyone was like, oh, he's not going to sign with Ottawa. He wants 6 by 6 and they're not going to give him that. So in order to get him out of Ottawa, they sent him out alongside Hammond, Bowers, and two picks for Matt Duchesne in return. And ultimately, I believe that the Senators are the losers in this trade because they only got Duchesne in exchange for that package of five that they sent out. The Predators, on the other hand, they got away with this trade by giving up Vladislav Kamenev as well as a second round pick. So, taking a look at this trade... Taking a look at this piece of the trade, the Predators, Kyle Turris comes in, and out goes a second round pick, and Vladislav Kamenev, who I believe is going to be a very good scorer here in the NHL. Kamenev, he had 51 points in 70 AHL games last year, and he was highly touted as going to be a, oh, he's going to be a pretty good, like, middle six forward for, this, um, for the Predators, and he's not on the Predators anymore. So taking a look at what the Predators were able to achieve with this trade, they got a fresh, brand new Kyle Turris, signed him to a 6x6, so that's good, he's locked up, and they only had to give up a third Gerard and Kamenev. That's also a good piece of the trade. And you know why it's a good piece of the trade? Because the Predators, they did not lose a definitive roster player. Everyone was saying, oh, it's going to be Ekholm. Ekholm's gone. No, Ekholm is still on this team. Their defensive pairings stay the same. Yossi, Ekholm, Emelin, Subban, Irwin, Weber, 
and then Ryan Ellis as well. It is to my understanding that Gerard was playing for the Predators because of injuries. So, the fact that they will still be stable without Gerard in their system shows that, well, they didn't give up what is to be expected as a definitive Nashville Predator this season, because Ellis is still off the table. There's no doubt that they have other guys in the Milwaukee system that will be able to play until Ellis comes back. The Predators, I'm very surprised with how well they've been doing this as well, because they get themselves Turris, who can slot in on that second line, or the first line, mind you, because Turris can honestly play on either one of those. So, he's placed in that good top six. His wingers are going to be Hartnell, Arvidsson, Forsberg, and Smith. If he gets demoted to the third line once in a while, he'll have Fiala and Aberg. Nashville has just improved their team significantly without giving up more than they needed to. Because Kamenev is going to be a good player. He'll be a good middle six forward in the NHL, I believe. And... Gerard's going to be a good defenseman too, but it's not his time right now. And the Predators want to win now. Whatever second round pick they gave up, we can't really tell about that. But just purely taking a look at this trade. The Senators, I don't think they, they got enough. I think they gave up too much. The Avalanche, well, they got a lot. And considering the fact that they only gave up Matt Duchesne... This is fantastic. This is exactly what Sakic wanted. Sakic wanted a lot of picks and prospects and whatever. It took two teams for him to be able to bite and say, yeah, this is what's going to get me the trade, Duchesne. And in the end, Colorado makes out with what they wanted. They got three picks. They got Hammond and three good prospects. Bowers, Gerard, and Kamenev are going to be good players on this Colorado Avalanche team in years to come. The Senators, they gave up too much to get Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne, in my opinion, is not worth Hammond, Bowers, a first, and a third. So that automatically dismisses me as saying, yeah, well, Ottawa kind of gave up a little bit too much. The Predators, on the other hand, they gave up just enough. They gave up Gerard, Kamenev, and a second in order to get Cal Turris, which, if you take a look at that, if the Senators traded Turris to Nashville for Gerard Kamenev in a second, I'd be okay with that. But everything has to come together in such a way that all three teams are satisfied with what they got. And that's the point of having a three-way trade like this. So if all three teams are satisfied with what they've received, then okay, cool, that's what we've got. This is the trade, ladies and gentlemen. But as my personal opinion here, Colorado and Nashville, two winners. Nashville, they've added to an already super deep cup contending team Losing basically no roster players and getting Kyle Torres in return. Okay, that's good. Colorado, they get rid of Duchesne, and they get a whole bunch of stuff coming back. That's good. Ottawa, on the other hand, they give up quite a bit too much for Matt Duchesne, a player who's $6 million, his contract is expiring next season, or in two seasons, or whatever it is, and I just think they gave up a little bit too much. But if you're dealing with Joe Sackick, he wants a lot. And we all knew that he wanted a lot. So I'm not surprised that one team gave up a lot. That's what I think about this trade, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Plus, thanks for downloading, like, and subscribe to the gaming. And bye.